Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher and in today's video we're going to be talking about titrations for GCSE chemistry. Now this will be a part one of two video as there are some calculations that go along with titrations, especially if you are a higher tier student. So you will need to know how to do those calculations. So keep an eye out for that. And to make sure you don't miss it, click the bell notification and subscribe so you know when it is uploaded. It will be in a few days time. Also, thank you so much to everyone who has liked and shared my videos. I really am grateful for all the support here on YouTube. So let's get into the video and let's talk about titrations. What actually are they? Well, they are an amazing method to determine the volume of of an acid and the volume of an alkali which is needed to make a soluble salt. So you've done already a practical hopefully on how to make um, dry crystals or salts that are crystals. However, this is a way of getting a salt in a soluble form, so in a liquid state. And we do this by being very precise in our measurements of the volume of acid and alkali needed. The concentrations are known of both of these substances, but it's the volume that we're interested in. And we can do a bit of fancy maths to determine the concentrations and things like that. And like I say, that will be in a part two of this video. So let's talk about the actual misconceptions of this pro uh, particular method, but also the method itself. So the whole aim of titrations is to add an acid to an alkali to make a salt and water. And the reason you're using a titration is because you're trying to measure accurately and precisely the amount of acid that is needed to essentially neutralize the alkali substance to make that salt. So you need to be using really specific glassware that measures the volume of both the acid and the alkali to do this. So when students do this practical, the biggest misconception they find is knowing what the glassware is called and often they get mis mixed up. And in the exam, you need to know the difference between the two so that when you write a method or answer questions about this topic, you can accurately and confidently use that apparatus in your description of what's going on. So the first piece of glassware you need to know about is called the pipette. And this is a very thin tube-like um, piece of apparatus which accurately measures the volume of a solution. Usually a pipette will measure around 25 decimeters cubed of solution and this could be an acid, it could be an alkali, it depends which way round you're doing the titration experiment. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to place a pipette filler which is kind of a big plasticky um, box that goes on top of your pipette and you essentially wind up the pipette filler to fill up the pipette itself to around the 25 decimeter cube mark. And the way you know it's filled accurately and precisely is because on the top of the pipette there's actually a red line that indicates the maximum fill line. If you go above this line or below this line, it's really important to restart again and fill this correctly. Any air bubbles as well need to be accounted for and won't give you accurate results. So in this experiment, out of all the experiments at GCSE, this one is where you have to be the most precise in what you're doing and take your time with it. That being said, to make sure you're accurately measuring the volume, you want to look at the meniscus line of your liquids at all times. Um, the meniscus line is just a curved line. It's the bottom part of the curve that essentially tells you the correct volume or measurement that you're looking at. Because these solutions, the acids and the alkalis, they are diluted in water, they have that property of kind of a sticky um, molecular structure so that they can actually stick to the surface of those glassware pieces of equipment. And that will, if you read it incorrectly or you read it from an angle, this is called a parallax error. So you need to look at the meniscus line, literally move the, look at the line directly at eye level. Um, of course, because you're using acids and you're using alkalis, these can be hazardous. So one of the things you could do is to make sure the experiment is when you're filling up the pipette or you're filling up your burette, which I'll talk about in a minute, you're actually doing this um, where the clamp and the burette is on the floor, your pipette is on the floor, so you're not filling it above your eye level. That's a really important thing to mitigate when you're looking at using acids and alkalides and trying to look at that meniscus line carefully, but also safely. Now, the burette I've mentioned, because this often gets mixed up with the pipette, the burette is a much larger 
um, glass tube, essentially, that is held in place by a clamp and clamp stand. And you're filling your burette with the other solution. So let's say the pipette is filled up with the acid, your burette will contain the alkali solution, or you could swap them the other way around. It's totally up to you. Um, the burette itself, because it has the other solution in it, like I said, the hazard of that is when you're filling the burette, you want to make sure that this is done without you, you pouring it above your head. Um, so you're not pouring it above you, you actually move it to the floor and you can fill it up from there. Now the burette, you have a very small, almost like a tap attached to the bottom of it. And you're going to open that tap to fill the conical flask full of that acid or that alkali solution to neutralize the substance that's in the conical flask itself. Remember the pipette solution will tr be transferred into the conical flask. So when you add these solutions together, you're getting that neutralization reaction. And we're gonna talk about how we do this method now. So this is the method you need to know at GCSE for titrations. And you could get asked a six mark question, which is leveled in your response during the exam. And this essentially would require you to write a method in so much detail so that if anyone was to take your method and actually conduct the experiment themselves, they could actually do the experiment and obtain valid results. So this is the level of detail that you'll need to get those marks. Also, just to preface at this point, this method will work for any kind Kind of strong acid that you use so it could be sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid or also nitric acid as well the alkali solution you're going to use is most likely going to be sodium hydroxide um, just to recall as well these are strong acids which i've mentioned they are going to be diluted using some water however remember this is not a weak acid because they are now dilute they still fully ionize in that solution so if you want a bit of a recap about strong and weak acids i'll link a video for you in the card section so let's have a look at the method well first thing you want to do is use the pipette and pipette filler to add a measured volume of the alkali solution to a clean conical flask. So once you've transferred the pipette solution from the pipette into the conical flask, you're going to then add a few drops of the indicator to the conical flask. To clean the conical flask, by the way, you're going to need to use distilled water. And this is just to remove any potential contaminants or any substances that are left behind on the conical flask from perhaps previous use. And just to do that, to make sure that there's going to be no um, color changes that are unnecessarily done so or inadvertently done so. So you're doing this to prevent any problems from arising from previous experiments, for example. Um, the indicator you're going to use is actually either methyl orange or phenolphthalein, which is a really hard word to say, but both of these are specifically used for titrations. You may have heard of universal indicator, which has a broad spectrum of colors. You may have heard of litmus paper and also pH probes, but these are the two that they use for um, different titrations and experiments here. Phenolphthalein, by the way, is pink in an alkaline solution and decolorizes in a neutral or acidic solution. Um, methyl orange has a slightly different color change. So if it is in an acidic solution, it will have like a red color to it, a reddish orange color. But in a neutral or a alkali solution, it will actually color, color change to yellow. So these are a couple of color changes to be aware of and also the names of those indicators as well. And you can use either. Um, so you want to add a few drops of those indicators, whichever one you decide. And you want to place the conical flask onto a white tile. And this is so that you can see the color change much clearly as well. And you want to place the conical flask underneath the burette, um, the tap of the burette, so that when you add the acid from the burette into that solution, it's easily done. You want to fill the burette, by the way, like I said, with the acid, and you want to note the starting volume. Now, the burette is a really long glass tube, and if you were to fill the burette on a table, it would actually be above your eye level for most people. So one of the things with health and safety is to actually fill the burette using the clamp stand to hold it in place. Make sure the tap is closed as you do this as well, because um, otherwise it will just go all over the floor. But the burette, you want to do this so it's on the floor. Um, so you're actually filling it, and it will be up to probably here on on me at least the burette on the floor is about here um, and that way your eyes are protected you still want to wear goggles of course but it's just something else to mitigate and not accidentally pour acid onto yourself um, 
So you filled the burette with the acid and you noted the starting volume. It doesn't have to be at the zero mark. Remember to look at the meniscus line, but if it's not at the zero mark, you're going to be looking at the beginning volume and the end volume and working out the difference of how much volume of acid was needed for neutralization to occur. So whatever the starting volume is, do make a note of it because you're going to be using that to, to work out the difference. So you went, then want to add the acid really slowly by opening the tap of the burette and swirling the conical flask on the white tile um, to help with the mixture of that solution. And at the first signs of a color change, you want to close the tap immediately and start adding the acid drop wise. And what that means is you've opened the tap so much so that only one drop at a time of the acid can go into the conical flask. And yes, this can be tedious, but that's the way you're going to get the most accurate and precise results. Once you've gotten to an end point, um, you'll know this because of the color changes I've described a minute ago, you want to record the final volume and you want to work out the difference between the two. That will tell you the overall volume needed to neutralize that volume of the alkali solution. You then want to repeat this whole process again until you get something called a concordant result. And this is when the volumes or the titers are within 0 0.10 centimeters cubed of each other. And this can take a long time, especially if you're new to doing this sort of practical, but it's really important you get concordant results to then use to measure and work out your mean volume. And that will give you an average of how much acid is needed to neutralize the alkali solution. So we've gotten to the end of part one of this titration saga. If you do want part two, give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, because in the next part of this video, we will be talking about titration calculations for GCSE. And this is specifically aimed at higher tier students. So hopefully you find it helpful. If you know anyone who is studying higher tier, triple science, or just want some more help with titrations and calculations at GCSE, do let them know by sharing this video, like the video, and please do subscribe if you haven't already. I've been the GCSE science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy it, like I said, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and do look at the other videos that I've linked at the end of this one if you want more GCSE support for biology, chemistry or physics. I also have an Instagram and a TikTok account. All of it is at the GCC Science Teacher. So see you soon in the next one and have a great day. Take care. Bye.